and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to have you here. Happy second Friday of the month. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. So I just finished my coffee, very sad moment, and I've got my water and we're gonna get straight into it. Today I'm gonna be reading your guys' MLM Horror Stories. If you have an MLM Horror Story that you want to send to me, I have a new email now. If you have sent your MLM Horror Story to an old email of mine, just make sure to forward it to this one to make it easier for me to go through. And let's just get right into it. Oh, and also let me know, what are you drinking today? I wanna know. First one, it says, Hi Deanna, I love all of your videos. I personally once convinced to join a few MLMs in which none were successful and I started to become more aware of the shady business tactics. The most recent being three years ago, I joined Beachbody as a discount coach. I quickly felt guilted into recruiting and started to try and grow my coaching team. Around the same time I became a coach, a supervisor at my job also became a Beachbody coach. She was a lot more vocal and pushy about it to those around the office. She would pull individuals into side rooms and send messages constantly to her subordinates during the workday. She created a click within our employment setting for those on her Beachbody team. And I was clearly not since I was under another coach. She would have hushed conversations and soon my coworkers would not even talk to me. I am not saying it was all clearly based on the coaching issue and her seeing me as competition, but there were clearly signs of some of the ostracized of me at work stemmed from that. She tried to basically steal me out from under my coach whom I felt loyal to. But when I firmly said no, she was clearly upset by that answer. Fast forward a few months, I quit Beachbody as I felt it wasn't going anywhere for me and it felt it was causing issues in my work environment. She continues to sell Beachbody to her subordinates, her bosses, and anyone who will drink her magical shake. They even claimed they didn't think the blank vaccine didn't affect them as much because they drank these shakes. Regardless, I just don't feel it's ethical to sell your side hustle within your professional career. Maybe that's just my opinion, but I but it felt off. Who thinks it's unprofessional to sell in your work environment? I personally think it is. I think that is very weird. Like I feel like the people around you, especially your subordinates or like people under you are going to feel pressured to kind of like buy a product, especially if they see what you're doing to this individual. So for example, I'm not gonna say the person's name, but say the person who sent me this name's Becky. If Becky's in the office and the upline or the person in Beachbody continues to pester Becky and Becky says, no, I don't want to buy your products. And then people see that Becky said no. And then they start to realize that person in Beachbody starts to shame them, makes people stop talking to them. Clearly people don't want to be like Becky and they may be more inclined to purchase a product because they don't want to be treated like that in their workplace. So I don't like it. I don't like the dynamic that's in the workplace when it comes to selling products. I feel like that should be done on your own time and it makes the environment very weird and awkward. Like this person probably feels really crappy when they go to work because they're treated differently. Like they're treated like crap from this Beachbody individual just because this person, Becky, didn't want to sign up with them and Becky didn't want to join their team and Becky didn't want to do that like what like, like I just don't I don't like it and that brings me to this whole fake community so when you want to join an MLM they really thrive on talking about the community aspect because a lot of people in life and I find especially military spouses college students moms things like that they join MLMs a lot of the times because they are attracted to that community because a lot of us don't have a community especially with COVID and everything I feel like a lot of people are staying indoors not going out not making as much friends where they're even more inclined to join a so-called MLM based on the community aspect of things. And it sucks to see that the community aspect a lot of the times is so fake and it's so based on the money you can make someone. So for this person, why wouldn't the boss, right? The supervisor at the workplace that became a Beachbody coach, why wouldn't she still befriend Becky? Why wouldn't she still be friends with her and still include her in the community even though she was on someone else's team? Is it because she's not making them money? Like you're not making your supervisor more money by being under them and then recruiting people and building their team and she tried to steal her from her coach like she tried to steal Becky from her upline ridiculous it just goes to show that she just cares about making money off of people and that's a really sad aspect to it because if you say that Beachbody is such a community right if you are someone on social media saying that why don't you share that with everyone share that community with anyone that is a Beachbody coach then or you're just gonna do that with people who make you money that's really sad I hope that things have gotten better at work for this individual because that's not right it's not cool that they would do that. Also, if you are drinking Shakeology, it is not going to cure you and it's not some magical shake. That's just ridiculous and those people need to be reported to the company and to the FTC because those kind of claims are 
just not allowed. So let's move on to the next one. This one says Isogenics. We haven't heard an Isogenics horror story in a while. I have a story about Isogenics and it's more about the company in the MLM as opposed to the products or company itself. So a long time ago, maybe 2014-ish, my sister and her best friend and her friends in the circle were getting right into Isogenics. After seeing the weight she was losing, I thought I'd go along with her to one of the meetings that were being held by her upline. This meeting was held at a married couple's house who seemed to be living a pretty fruitful life even back then. We'll call them Jane and John. I didn't want to lose weight and in my opinion, didn't need to lose weight. I only weighed about 55 kilos, which is pretty low for my height. Anyways, I got talking to John. I'd say he was about four years older than me. Firstly, it was just general small talk. And then he asked me why I came to the meeting. And I said, I don't really know. I don't need to lose any weight, but I just wanted to come and see what this is all about. He responded, I can tell you have weight to lose that you don't even know about. Wow, I also got the whole, you can't put a price on your health, blah, blah. I wish I had told him to shove it, but at the time I wasn't self-confident at all. So I bought the products and all I can say is yuck. I returned the products and got my money back. After I returned my products, that was kind of the end of it. They never bothered me about it, but I still continued to follow these people on social media. Let's take a break for a second or pause for a second. That's really sad. You don't sit there and tell someone, oh, well, I can tell you have weight to lose that you don't even know about. How do you know someone wanted to lose that weight that you think they need to lose? Let people control what they do with their own bodies. And if a man told me that, but as she said, she's not, you know, she wasn't self-confident and a lot of people can do what she did and buy products and things like that because they don't really know how to respond to people. So that's really sad. Like who does that and says that to somebody? Let's continue. John and Jane share their wealth on social media by buying brand new cars, moving into a big home, buying expensive furniture and going on luxury holidays. Jane also is a hairdresser and has her own salon, which she can constantly reminds her followers that she continues to do hairdressing because she loves it, not because she needs the money from it. However, I just found out through a very trustworthy source that to keep up with their bills and debt, Jane is actually Jesus take the wheel. I was shocked to hear this. I am in no way shaming their choices, but what really gets me is that they brainwash everyone into thinking they live the life they live because of isogenics. When in fact I can imagine most of their money comes from her and her hairdressing business. The most off-putting thing about MLMs for me is the lying. Wanting to promote products you genuinely like, fine. But don't tell me you live this wonderful lifestyle all because of isogenics. It's shady and manipulative, and this is how people get sucked in. Hope you enjoy the story. It's probably a little bit different. So yeah, that is a different story. I haven't heard one like that, but you are right. There are a lot of times we see in MLMs where people will attribute the money that they're making from the MLM to that lifestyle, right? They'll say, oh, I have this amazing lifestyle because of this MLM, but we have seen time and time again, a bunch of scenarios where that's not true, where people do have other businesses that they're actually making their money from. They have spouses who are making the money for them. They, you know, have a really good job that pays them well to where they can actually really make it look like it's the MLM that's paying them well. So you're making people feel like they can make all of this money from an MLM when we know that they probably can't. So I actually just looked it up and I found this document and it said key facts about isogenics. And it talks about the earnings disclosure statement and the earnings disclosure statement from 2019 says that about 50% made more than $466 annually and the other half made less than that. But I can't find like an actual income disclosure statement. I could just find that one site that said that. So it's not enough for me to be confident about how much people are making or not making without seeing like an actual income disclosure statement. Then it says, while 50% made more than the US $466 and the other half made less, 10% made more than $3,256 annually and 1% made more than $45,000. Now you have to get to that top 1% to earn over $45,000 in a year, which a lot of jobs, you can earn more than that. And then the 10% made more than 3,000. So $3,256 annually in a whole year isn't a lot of money. So let's break this down and see what people earn for the whole or for every single month. So 3,256 divided by 12, you only earn $271 a month. So how much product are you buying? How many trips do you go on? How many you know things do you get? And then you're only making $271. So how much money are you really bringing home? So only 10% of people in isogenics made more than that 
$3,256, which still isn't a lot. Like $3,256, $271 a month, that's it? Like I might, I might as well be working like a full-time job because $271 isn't gonna do anything for me, especially after I purchase products, right? Because you have to purchase products in an MLM. If you want to sell and you want to make yourself look credible, you need to be actually using the products and showing some sort of proof that you're using them consistently. So I could say maybe you're bringing home $100 at the end of it when you look at your expenses versus what's going in and going out or whatever. So yeah, that's really sad. That's not a lot of people making a lot of money. Ooh, and then it says as of December 31st, 2019, there were 308 Isogenics millionaires, associates who have exceeded 1 million in cumulative gross earnings since joining. But then it says those in this group average approximately 6.1 years as an Isogenics associate before becoming Isogenics genetics millionaires with the longest being 16 years. Wow. Could you imagine 16 years? So that's what you have to think about when you see that there's 308 millionaires, right? Where the approximate time it takes to get there is 6.1 years, but then the longest 16, how much money have they really spent? So they may be millionaires, right? They accumulated a million dollars, but how much did they really have in their pocket? How much did, did they really make whenever you take the expenses out of that? So that's what I'd be curious about. So there's just the result. This was published in in July of 2020. So probably in July, we'll probably get the 2021 version, an updated one. So I'm curious how these numbers may have changed, but that's still really bad. Like that's not good at all. So that's just an example of what people are probably making in isogenics. So let's move on to the next one, to the next one. This one says toxic positivity and gaslighting. Also, I'm really sorry if the audio is not gonna be the best in this one. Our neighbors are doing like a lot of construction and they're like mowing their lawn and now they're weed whacking. I'm like, I just want to film. I just want to film. This one may just be the longest MLM horror story we've ever had. So this one says, hi, Deanna. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for your YouTube channel and for spreading the word against MLMs. Here's my horror story. It's a beach body story. I appreciate it if you keep my identity private. It's a long one, so feel free to edit and talk about what you deem is relevant. They said about me, I am Gen X, late 40s, female, single with a college degree and a professional license and have a nine to five corporate job. I'm also a caregiver for my sibling who has special needs. I have been successful in corporate America and so are most of my friends and family who either have a corporate job or an actual business. I love my job and love working for somebody else's business because they actually pay me for working and not for working days off and have great employee benefits. Yes, there are some bad days at work, but nothing is perfect. I will also admit I've struggled almost all my adult life with depression, anxiety, insomnia, and self-esteem issues, and I am under therapy. Bear with me, this will all be relevant later. Beginning of my Beachbody journey. And she put journey in quotes. My journey with Beachbody started in 2014. I am in a running club with an actual certified personal trainer. I have social media being Facebook, and the one in which I tend to post some personal stuff, such as posting pictures with my running club. I am not an avid poster, nor post too much information. One day in 2014, one of my high school friends messaged me on Facebook saying that she loved my running posts, which actually were not that many, and asked if I ever considered complimenting running with other exercises. She sent me a link to the Beachbody site. I replied saying hi to her and about the link, I just said, thank you very much. I opened the link and the first faces I saw were Pony Horton and Sean T. I have friends who did programs like P90X and Insanity, and I thought there is no way I'm ever doing anything that extreme. I kept seeing the Facebook posts of my high school friend about her online fitness group and about four months later I messaged her back saying that I would be interested in a program. To make up for the days I would not be able to work out with my running club but I did not want to do anything extreme nor was I going to post pictures of myself online like those before and after pictures with just sports bras and shorts in front of a mirror. She recommended me the Turbo Fire Challenge Pack and told me that I do not need to post that kind of picture if I don't want to. I opened the link, the program seemed good and and it is good. And when I was in the pro process of buying it, I saw the shake and the monthly subscription and I almost stopped. I'm not a fan of taking supplements, but I just trusted my friend and bought it. Canceled the monthly shake subscription immediately after I received my shipment. I did not like the shake. At that time, there were no Beachbody on demand workouts. I liked the workout, so I bought a few DVDs. 
The online fitness group was not my cup of tea. I did not like the fact that I had to come home from work, work out, and then I had to post every single thing I ate and be judged. My high school friend is not judgmental at all, but I have self-esteem issues. She did not say anything about me canceling the monthly shake subscription and she never mentioned the business opportunity. That's why she's still my friend. Fast forward to 2018. I received a promotional email from Beachbody about their new nutrition only program to be mindset. I was intrigued because I'm an emotional eater and I'm aware that I needed to improve my nutrition. Tubi was created by a registered nutritionist, unlike the color containers, which I dreaded. I wanted to buy the program immediately. I checked my Beachbody account and my coach at the time was my friend's sister. My high school friend quit the MLM and my friend's sister was not working as a Beachbody coach. I guess she was just like a discount code. I read all the promotion of the program and it said that it needed a Beachbody coach for support and accountability. I searched on Instagram, the hashtag to be mindset and I came across a random Beachbody coach who was promoting the program and I posted on her page that I was interested. Immediately I received a follow and a DM from her. Let's call her Mary, stating she loved my IG page, my city, etc. My IG page is very small, but I guess she did her due diligence to make it seem like she was interested in me. I replied that I knew Beachbody. I was not interested in Bod nor the Shake. I just wanted the To Be Mindset program and the accountability. She told me I should put her as my coach, which I did. I bought the program and she friend requested me on Facebook to put me in her accountability groups. She lives in another state and we do not have friends in common. Later, Beachbody announced that there was going to be a coach exclusive group with the creator of To Be Mindset. I was so interested in the program that I decided to become a coach just to be in the group. I told Mary and she said she has been praying more like praying, P-R-E-Y, that I become a coach because she knew I would be perfect. I told her that I was not going to work the business. I just wanted to be in the coach exclusive group because I thought it would help me with the program. I even got the Shake subscription for the PV points. I think Tubi is not bad. Of course, it's better to pay a registered nutritionist, but I do not feel Tubi is as restrictive as the color containers. I was trying to focus on my journey, but Mary was always not only highly praising every single thing I posted in our Facebook accountability group, but also sent me almost daily DMs praising me, saying I was an amazing person, which it felt weird because we didn't even know each other. Occasionally, Mary sent me a DM in between the daily Beachbody DMs asking me random questions about my life, my job, my city, my friends, even my religion. I replied because I did not think about anything bad at the time. Now I understand that those random personal DMs were for her to gain personal information for her to gaslight me. I always knew pyramid schemes were illegal, but I did not understand the difference between a pyramid scheme and an MLM, or at least I thought there was a difference, and I thought that Beachbody was not an illegal pyramid scheme. At that time, I did not know what po toxic positivity was, nor did I know about gaslighting. Mary seemed so nice to me and was trying very hard to convince me to work the business. I was intrigued and even bought a ticket to Summit 2019, even though I was not sure if I could attend. When I bought that ticket, Mary told me she cried for joy because her prayers were answered. That seemed very odd to me because that is odd. That's very odd. And also guys, a Summit ticket is about $300, so she spent that much money on it too. Mary added me in her upline private Facebook group. I met her upline and a lot of the team coaches, and I have to say that these huns were not like those awful ones you have shown in your videos. I never saw them scream or talk bad to anyone or about anyone. They all seemed to be very nice, perfect people. I always felt weird around them. I only got to meet them online, never in person. I always wondered that they all seemed so perfect, and I'm not perfect. Don't they have any problems? Do they have any bad days? One thing is to never vent problems online, which I don't, but another thing is to have an absolute perfect online presence. That's how I learned about toxic positivity. If someone struggled with the business, their answer was to pray harder and read personal development. They said that the business was very easy to do and that we all have done harder things in our lives. The upline discouraged to post anything controversial or political opinion. I am very opinionated and I can post anything I want online. So that was another thing that I thought was weird. They only posted about the company and even their posts about family or church activities were tied somehow to Beachbody. When one posted a call to action post, the rest of the Huns liked and commented on the post, which is cringeworthy. I did it too and I felt so awkward and I know that my real friends thought it was awkward because it was not me. They also said that one should become Emerald no later than 24 hours after becoming a coach. That is actually a big thing. It's called Emerald in 24 hours. So if you guys don't know what Emerald is, Emerald is having two people in your downline. So you recruit two people and then you'll rank up to being an Emerald coach. So that's definitely a thing where they do those. She said, I asked Mary how I can sign someone up under me after they bought something that they had not even 
tried. Mary said, just offer the discount. Tell them that they will be a preferred customer and we'll have a discount and we'll have the opportunity to earn commission if they want to. That did not make sense to me. Their Emerald training said that in order to become an Emerald, one should sign the spouse and a family member that has to be done in 24 hours. They explained the strong and weak leg, but I never understood it all I kept thinking was, how is this not a pyramid scheme? Why would anyone sign a family member and control their account? It's an additional cost. Also, at the time, I didn't know that it was prohibited. It just felt wrong. Three, why would anyone buy anything and at the same time start a business, even when they have not tried the product? She's 100% right. I have actually showcased this on my channel before, where when they talk about joining or becoming Emerald in 24 hours, whatever it may be, that's what they talk about. They talk about sign up your spouse, sign up a family member, because those are easy people that will buy dirt from you, so they'll sign up with you. And then they they want you to control those people's accounts so that you can make money and double dip. So you can double dip into your account and a spouse's account because you'll be able to control both. So in the long run, if you do get to the top of the MLM and you have your spouse under you and you're controlling their account, which is prohibited, it's against the rules. If you see anyone controlling someone's account, report them to the FTC and report them to the MLM, especially Beachbody. I have seen accounts be taken down because they're not supposed to be doing this. You're not allowed to control someone's account. So if someone is controlling someone's account and they get to the top of the MLM, you have your spouse right under you, you're going to be double dipping. But I thought I'd mention that because it's a very common thing. I even had my husband signed up. I didn't really sign people up under him, but I did have him signed up under me because I was told it was an amazing thing to do and you'd be able to double dip and how awesome it was. I didn't know it was against the rules either. She said, enter my mental health issues and my family. I am single, so I can't sign my spouse, and I do not think I would have. My parents passed away years ago, and I do not think I would have signed them either. My only sibling is the one I care for, who has special needs. Mary told me to sign up my sibling as a coach. I asked her why, and Mary said, so that you are halfway to Emerald, and I just only have to recruit one more person. I said, my sibling is never going to work the business. I am the provider, so I would have to pay for two accounts. Mary told me to view it as an investment. My siblings would be in my weak leg and also my sibling could inherit my business. That did not make any sense to me, but at this point, she already gathered enough information from my random question she asked me about my personal life. So Mary asked, don't you wanna be at home with your sibling and not work for somebody else? Two, your job is so stressful. It must be awful to work in that place. Three, I pray that you are successful and become an elite. I know you can. I did sign my sibling as a coach. My sibling never made a sale and yes, I controlled the account and I was paying two coaching fees and had the stress of keeping both accounts active. The second one of the accounts went inactive, Mary would message me even if I was on vacation so I would activate the account. Not even my boss messages me on vacation. I made four retail sales to two friends, but they were not interested in becoming a coach nor in the shakes. I added one of those friends in the Facebook accountability group and my friend is very nice and easygoing, so immediately Mary told me to sign her up as a discount coach. She's one of my best friends. We have been friends for over 14 years. She told me she was not interested in ever becoming a coach. If I offer something to a friend and they say no, I must respect that because I expect to receive the same respect. Mary insisted, so much that one day. While she was in a retreat with her upline, she DM'd me offering to pay my friend's coaching fee because she was about to rank advance. I told her, what's the point of paying for someone else if they already told me that they're not interested nor are willing to work the business? At that point, she said, it's just too bad that you don't have a spouse or other siblings. I felt awful, like I was a failure because all these women were able to make it happen and I simply could not. That's how I figured out about gaslighting. I also had no idea that Mary was trying to buy her rank and that was prohibited. I was able to cancel my siblings' accounts because there were no unrelated issues with the debit card of the account and the bank canceled the debit card and issued a new one and I never updated the info on the Beachbody site. Mary never said anything about it. That's when I was convinced that she gave up on me because I never received another DM from her. I was able to cancel my summit ticket and received a full refund. At the beginning of 2021, oh, I found Heather Rainbow on TikTok. And that's how I learned about the anti mlm community. I searched for YouTube videos and found your channel. I recently canceled my coach account. I did not tell Mary I canceled. Why should I? I was supposed to be my own boss. I have withdrawn from all the Facebook groups, stopped following Beachbody on social media, and have blocked or unfriended all of these hunts. I did not unfriend Mary, nor she has said anything about me. Sometimes she comments on my post saying, miss you, my friend, but I do not reply. I am not sure if I will ever tell her anything about why I quit. 
I know she's totally brainwashed. So now she breaks up things and she says the awful and the good things about being in Beachbody, which I think is really cool. So let's read this. She says the awful. Mary diverted me from completing the 2B Mindset program, which was my goal. Don't Beachbody say that one should be a product of the product. Two, she made me feel stressed and depressed that I was single in my 40s. Three, she made me feel stupid that I wasn't not able to become Emerald because that was supposed to happen in 24 hours. Four, she never insulted me or said anything mean to me, nor her fellow huns in her upline, but I never thought that toxic positivity was such an awful thing. Next, I have never in my life was gaslighted and it felt awful. Mary convinced me that I was lazy and stupid. I felt so ashamed because I am an adult. I have never let anyone bully me and I am grateful that almost all of my relationships have been positive. And here I was being gaslighted by someone I've never even met. Next, she made me feel lonely, like I did not have family or loved ones. It's just weird, but I felt like that. Those huns are always posting pictures of their family when they are using them as props. Next, the emerald thing is supposed to be easy and a big thing, but it is, it is obtained through deception. I just cannot deceive my family or friends. I can't believe I felt stupid for not getting this rank because it's just a scam. Next, the amount of misinformation appalled me. Seeing posts in the upline group asking, I have a customer who has PCOS, MS, cancer, etc. Do you think that the shake would help them? And then seeing the Hun say things like, I have MS and I've been in remission ever since I started drinking the shake or my friend has stage four cancer and the shake has helped her remission. Really? Ask your health professional. None of these Huns are in the healthcare field. I am not in the healthcare or fitness industry. Therefore, I cannot give advice in that area. Lastly, I noted that my anxiety and depression were during this time and I could not pinpoint what it was because everything else in my life is almost stable even considering the pandemic after binge watching anti-MLM videos I understood how the MLMs are cults and that was the cause of my worsening symptom I have felt better watching the videos realizing that I am not wrong for feeling the way I feel and the MLMs are just gross of course, I continue my therapy with my online health professional. Now she says, there were some good things in disguise. One, I did not drag anyone into the scheme. I have all of my friends and none of my real relationships were ruined. These huns were not my friends. Two, I am very grateful for my job and career in corporate. I am one of the lucky ones that have been able to work from home all this time and I've never missed a paycheck. I even had a job promotion that was I was seeking for over a year. I never thought that was going to happen during a pandemic. Maybe someday I will change my industry or even even have my own real small business, but I can never say that corporate America was bad for me. In your face, Hunts, I am working from home while taking care of my sibling and I can actually turn off the computer and rest. Three, I am very grateful for the community, anti-loan community. I am proud to see so many young people being educated and outspoken. It is so cringeworthy when I hear these Huns say that college is not worth it. Really, that is the only thing that no one can take from anyone, a professional degree. Education will never be out of style. Anti-MLMers, keep going, you are making a difference. Maybe this was not a, as a nasty experience as other horror stories, but I wanted to share my toxic positivity experience, which is as awful as all MLM experiences. Thank you for reading and for all you do. You are helping a lot of people. I know you conquer all of your goals. Once again, thank you. So that was the most jam-packed MLM horror story we have ever read here on the channel. But thank you so much to the individual that sent this to me. And also, when you said maybe this was not as nasty of an experience as other horror stories, that's fine. Like, not everyone's horror story needs to be this disgusting and, and uplines are being mean to me because it's not happening everywhere. I like that you were able to come from a different side to really express the amount of toxic positivity and gaslighting that has happened to you because that's another aspect of what happens in MLMs and it made me really sad to see that this individual felt so down about herself like she said she was made to feel lonely that she didn't and made to feel bad that she didn't have any loved ones you know she was gaslighted to feel awful and lazy and stupid and that's the thing about gaslighting and toxic positivity and I'm so happy that you have gotten through that and passed that and that you have this amazing job where you're able to work from home and that's what I love so much about normal jobs, not MLMs, is that a lot of these jobs nowadays are able to work from home. And that's the great thing. MLMs are always saying, oh, you should be able to work from home. But a lot of jobs are doing that now. So what can they say now? But anyways, thank you for sharing this. It was a long story and probably not an easy one to go back over. I would love to know if anyone else has experienced something similar, no matter what MLM you were in. Did you experience that same toxic positivity or gaslighting? And a lot of the times you don't realize it's happening to you. You don't realize that what you're surrounding 
putting yourself in is toxic and you are, you know, experiencing a lot of gaslighting and a lot of toxic positivity because gaslighting isn't meant to be something that you recognize, right? Unless you're very educated in what gaslighting is, a lot of people utilize that to manipulate someone. And I also find that a lot of MLM reps don't even realize they're doing it. Like the MLM reps that are individuals who do gaslight, many of them don't understand that they're doing that because they've been taught from their upline and the CEOs, right? And the people in corporate to do and say certain things. So what happens is they end up doing and saying things that were done and said to them and then they don't realize it's wrong because a lot of people in MLMs don't realize, oh, what is toxic positivity? What is gaslighting? So yeah, a lot of the times people don't realize it's happening and that's why whenever you get out, you start to, a lot of people start to feel guilty like, oh my gosh, did I act that way? Did I act the way that my upline was acting to me to my downline? And you start thinking all those thoughts and that's where a lot of people become very shameful in their experience. But I want you to know, if you have gone through this and to this individual, you are amazing. You're not some lonely person that you feel lazy and bad. You have a nine to five. You take care of your sibling. Like that You're that in itself, you're an amazing human to do that. Anyone who takes in a sibling and helps them and is there for them 24 seven is the greatest thing you could ever ask for in a sibling. So you're doing a amazing things and I bet you're the opposite of lazy. So that is going to be all for this MLM Horror Story because that one was so long. I hope you guys have an amazing and beautiful day. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about these. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on the toxic positivity and the gaslighting because we don't see that a lot of times in our horror stories. We see, yes, gaslighting and stuff happening, but not so prominent like this MLM Horror Story that we just read. So don't forget to like this video if you liked it, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.